Everybody. Hello. It is wonderful to see y'all. Um, make sure your camera is off as you're joining. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, throw uh, your name and your organization and where you're joining us from today in the chat if you'd like. Hi, Martina. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Hunter. Hi, Lakeisha. Hi, Cassie. Looks like we're getting folks already joining us from all over. It's wonderful to see. I'm going to let folks filter in here for a couple more minutes, and then we'll get started. It's from Lakewood. Oh, from somebody's here from Lakewood. Hi, my mom lives in Lakewood. <laughs> it's good to see you here. It's also one from Broward College. I work with some of the folks on a on re-entry, so that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, hi, Patricia. Hi, Veronica. I'm trying to catch all the names as fast as they're coming in there, just so quick. <laughs> hi, Miss Regina. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Leslie. I love Patricia says, happy, happy fiesta. <laughs> oh, happy fiesta. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, you need a Felicia, Ronald. Hi, Hannah. Looks like you're coming to us from a workforce development board. That's great. Hi, Casey. Hi, Jose. From Puerto Rico. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. All right. So we're at 103. So I am going to go ahead and get started. All right, um, so we are delighted to welcome you to this webinar on investing in early childhood education careers, navigating funding for registered apprenticeship, presented in collaboration with the Council for Professional Recognition and the Early Childhood Workforce Connector. Today's webinar is part of a series dedicated to highlighting registered apprenticeship programs in the field of early childhood education. This underscores our commitment to providing knowledge and resources for professional knowledge and growth in this field. So a quick couple bits of housekeeping. Uh, to turn on closed captions, click the three dots labeled as more in the bottom right corner and select captions from the menu if you need. Uh, all participants are muted upon entry. There will be an opportunity between sections and at the end of the presentations for Q&A, you are welcome to unmute and ask your questions during these times. We also have team members monitoring the chat so you can pop your questions in there throughout the presentation. The slide deck will be shared following this presentation and a recording will be available on our CAN network. Let's dive in. So first, let's get to know our presenters. I'm Haley Brush, the Public Policy and Advocacy Manager here at the Council for Professional Recognition. I started my career in early childhood systems building at the local level, first in Philadelphia and then in DC, where I focused on providing technical assistance and emergency funding supports before joining the council. Here, I lead our policy efforts, including coordinating our federal and state strategy, policy related communications and our advocate engagement. I'd also like to introduce Marjorie Cohen, the project manager for the Early Childhood Workforce Connector who has over 20 years of experience in education and workforce development policy and research, technical assistance, program management, and project leadership. Marjorie supports early childhood education providers, in-demand sector employers, uh, secondary and post-secondary education institutions, state and local agencies, and other key stakeholders to provide high-quality registered apprenticeship programs for the ECE workforce. 
Last but certainly not least, meet April McDonough of Multifaceted Professional Excelling in Grants Management and Instructional Design. As a grants management spe specialist, April assists individuals and organizations in securing funding for educational projects, leveraging her expertise to transform businesses and educational institutions. With a background in instructional design, April has proven has a proven track record of developing engaging online courses and materials tailored to diverse learners. She brings a wealth of experience in coaching, mentoring, curriculum development, and communication skills to her role as a subject matter expert in higher education on the ECWC team. Really quickly, I'll just share the agenda for today. Uh, first, we'll be discussing our partnership with the Early Childhood Workforce Connector and learning about their organization. Then we'll get into the details on exploring effective funding sources and strategies, what funding is out there at the state, federal, state, and local levels. And we'll also look at funding for earning your CDA before ultimately closing with how you can explore the supports available from ECWC. Many of you here today may already be connected with the council and our work, but I'd like to share a little bit about what we do to make sure everyone is on the same page. We administer the Child Development Associate or CDA credential, which is the most widely recognized credential in early childhood education. It is nationally recognized, transferable, and competency-based. It is a key stepping stone on the path to career advancement in early childhood education. To be awarded the credential, candidates must complete an assessment process and demonstrate that they are able to put their knowledge of the CDA competency standards into practice in their daily work with children and families. Candidates can earn their credential in any of the settings that we offer, infant toddler, preschool, family child care, home visiting, or military school age. Being awarded the CDA means a candidate is qualified to be a lead teacher in the classroom. The Council for Professional Recognition and the Early Childhood Workforce Connector have partnered to support credentialed career pathways for early childhood educators. Registered apprenticeship programs are an important investment in the early childhood workforce, providing high quality professional learning and equitable compensation. This webinar series will explore how registered apprenticeships provide a professional development pathway to develop skills, advance and sustain successful careers, and strengthen the ECE workforce. The Council for Professional Recognition is a leader in credentialing early childhood educators worldwide. Together with the Early Childhood Workforce Connector, we are working toward advancing the careers of ECE professionals through the Child Development Associate and U.S. Department of Labor credentialing. We will host these monthly webinar sessions leading up to the 2024 Early Educators Leadership Conference in Washington, D.C. in October. The Early Childhood Workforce Connector will be presenting there alongside their partners to dive deeper into registered apprenticeship programs for ECE. And I'll hand it off to Marjorie. Thanks so much, Haley. Um, so um, if you've been to these webinars before, I'm gonna be talking really quickly about who we are and what registered apprenticeship looks like in early childhood. If you have um, some significant questions about either of those, please feel free to see previous webinars. This is the third in the series um, and the other two are on the CAN network. Um, so let me talk for a second about um, the Early Childhood Workforce Connector. Who are we? So we're one of two new early childhood education registered apprenticeship industry intermediaries, which is a big mouthful. Um, and the Early Childhood Workforce Connector, or ECWC, promotes developing, launching, and expanding registered apprenticeship programs to support and sustain a diverse, inclusive, well-qualified, and well-compensated early childhood education workforce. ECERA programs with high quality, accessible, supportive, and equitable early childhood program employers with the entire community and the local workforce. A strong, inclusive, and robust early childhood ecosystem contributes to the health and well being of young children and their families, as well as the broader economy. As a US Department of Labor funded early childhood education intermediary, ECWC provides customized technical assistance including help with curriculum development, outreach and recruitment, mentor training, and accessing available funding, and so much more, which we will get into shortly. Um, so let's talk very briefly about registered apprenticeship and ECE so that we can really get into um, the bulk of this conversation. Um, and for many of you who have been at the first couple um, webinars, I hope this is a really useful recap everybody sort of in mind on what we're talking about. 
So as we discussed in our previous webinars, registered apprenticeship is a structured Department of Labor approved training model. I want to quickly give an overview of what registered apprenticeship is before we dive into navigating the funding sources to support this training model. So here are the seven components of registered apprenticeship. First, um, it's industry-led. Programs are industry-vetted and approved to assure alignment with industry standards. That apprentices are trained for highly qualified, highly skilled, high-demand occupations. So that means that early childhood is education, um, the, the field is really in the driver's seat. Um, it's a paid job. Apprenticeships are jobs. Apprentices earn a progressive wage as their skills and their productivity increases. It has structured on-the-job learning. Programs provide structured on-the-job training to pre prepare for a successful career, which includes instruction from experienced mentor, their supplemental education, um, which is known as uh, sort of classroom or related training instruction. So apprentices are provided supplemental classroom and ed education based on the employer's unique training needs to ensure quality and success. Uh, diversity is a big component of registered apprenticeship. Programs are designed to reflect the communities in which they operate through strong non-discrimination, anti-harassment, and recruitment practices to ensure access, equity, and inclusion. Quality and safety, which of course is very important in an early childhood um, classroom. Apprentices are afforded worker protections while receiving rigorous training to equip them with the skills they need to succeed and the proper training and supervision they need to be safe. Finally, um, apprentices earn a portable nationally recognized credential within their industry at the end of every registered apprenticeship. Um, so let's talk a little more generally about how the registered apprenticeship system works in the US. The light blue states represent where registered apprenticeship programs are facilitated by the, off by the US Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship. The dark blue states are overseen by state apprenticeship agencies. And these states follow the rules and regulations from the Office of Apprenticeship, as well as adhering to state-specific guidance. Um, they're, they're, it's two slightly different systems. And so it's always good to know whether your state is either an SAA state, a state apprenticeship agency state, or an OA state, which is the federal government. Um, that uh, that recognizes and uh, registers apprenticeship. Um, so this, this next slide, um, we see a visual comparison of work-based learning programs. Um, in the far right column, we've highlighted the guarantees with the registered apprenticeship program. As you can see, internship and apprenticeship, sort of not registered, have some of these components, but only a registered apprenticeship. Um, that is registered with uh, the Department of Labor has all of these components, including um, that RA is a, com a commitment to increasing knowledge and skills through industry approved on the job training and coursework, as well as mentorship, as I mentioned. Um, there is access to funding and other resources from federal programs, um, which we will learn a lot more about in near moments. And then um, Lastly, graduates, as I mentioned, receive nationally recognized credentials. A lot of graduates, as you'll hear about, um, a lot of apprentices will earn something like the CDA. Um, but in addition to that, there is a nationally recognized registered apprenticeship credential um, that they can take with them wherever they may go. Um, and then just to um, just make sure that we're all on the same page about benefits of registered apprenticeship. Um, it helps early childhood educators flourish by supporting high quality, accessible and equitable opportun learning opportunities that enable them to enrich the lives of children, families and communities while also increasing access to childcare. Employers, registered apprenticeship increases employee re retention. The data from the US Department of Labor right now is that currently 90% of apprentices remain with their host employer after completing a registered apprenticeship program. Employers also benefit from customized workforce training that meets the needs for their specific workforce. Apprentices benefit from progressive wages as they gain more knowledge and skills. And as I mentioned, uh, for the, this will be the third time, apprentice graduates receive nationally recognized credentials from USDOL that do not expire. Now I'm gonna turn it over to uh, my colleague, April, um, so that we can learn more about funding sources for all of these incredible programs. Thank you, Marjorie. Um, 
So successful registered apprenticeship requires a network of support, and by identifying and securing diverse funding sources, you contribute not only to the immediate training needs, but to the long-term growth and expansion of the ECE registered apprenticeship landscape. This works together to develop a highly qualified workforce, provide equitable access, and sustainable wages. So building on the recap from Marjorie on registered apprenticeship, let's dive into effective funding sources and strategies, and let's start with our first poll. So what do you think are some costs associated with registered apprenticeship? Please type your answer in the chat. And Sabrina has placed that in the chat for you. Application fees, we have job wages, tuition and mentorship, a lot of wages, um, lots on wages there. Tuition, coaching, supplies, recruitment and marketing, coursework, credentials, yeah, certifications, mentor stipends, RA costs, support services, marketing. Sounds like you all really understand what's going on there with the cost of, of, of a registered apprenticeship. So let's talk about the role of funding in supporting ECE programs. So strong foundations are essential for any successful endeavor or business. Just imagine building a house on sand versus a solid foundation. The same applies for early education, early childhood education. Quality ECE programs provide a building block for child, a child's development. Um, it helps spark their curiosity, their learning journey, and prepare them for a bright future. But funding is needed to make these programs an actuality. Um, listed here, you can see that all of these items are pivotal to the success of the program. So ensuring there's quality enhancement, access and equity, Funding supports infrastructure and facilities, professional development, innovation and research, sustainability, parental support and engagement, and policy and regulation. When investing in ECE, we invest in our future, in the future success of our children, our families, and our communities, and we are building a strong foundation for a brighter tomorrow. So you just answered a poll about the cost of registered apprenticeship in ECE. Now that you understand the importance of funding for ECE programs, let's explore the key components, um, key cost components of registered apprenticeship programs. First, you need a solid foundation. That means establishing the program framework, including registration and ensuring compliance with regulation. This initial step and in administrative cost is a first step to building a successful apprenticeship. Then comes the investment in the apprentice's journey. We need to cover both on the job training, which includes wages for the apprentice and mentor, related technical instruction like classroom learning. And this ensures that apprentices gain both the practical skills and the theoretical knowledge to excel in the ECE workforce. Apprenticeship um, compensation is another key consideration. Apprentices are paid employees and their wages rightfully increase as they progress through the program. Depending on the employer, they may also receive benefits like health insurance, adding to the overall cost of the apprenticeship. But the investment goes beyond compensation. We need to provide the necessary tools and resources for practical training, ensuring apprentices have access to the materials and equipment they need to succeed. Finding the right talent is also very important. Funding allows for outreach and selection process to attract qualified candidates who thrive in the apprenticeship program. So while there's a cost to consider, this investment has significant return. We are building a skilled workforce, ensuring high quality and early childhood education, and ultimately paving the way for a stronger future for our communities. Understanding these funding needs, including wages and benefits, will help um, employer, employer programs to turn this investment into a success story. Join us in our August webinar to learn more about how to secure funding for competitive wages and benefits. So part of funding that we need to talk about first is return on investment. So while we're out, while we're 
looking at our funding strategies, um, we need to make sure that investing in our program requires the understanding of return. The good news is, is that registered apprenticeship offers a strong return on investment for employers. Um, national studies show that employers see a benefit of $1.50 for every $1 invested in registered apprenticeship programs. One of the biggest ways this pays off is through the reduction of staff turnover. We mentioned earlier that an impressive 90% of apprentices stay with their employer after completing a registered apprenticeship program. This significantly reduces the cost and disruption of constantly refilling open positions. But the benefits go beyond just the bottom line. Registered apprenticeships enhance employees' engagement and they foster a positive workplace culture. By investing in your workforce through registered apprenticeship programs, you cultivate a sense of loyalty among employees who appreciate that you prioritize their professional development. This leads to a more engaged and productive workforce overall. So registered apprenticeships are a great way to build a strong skilled workforce while reducing cost and creating a loyal and productive team. So let's talk about the types of funding that you, that you can look at for supporting your registered apprenticeship program. The success of early childhood education registered apprenticeship or ECERA as we will call it moving forward um, hinges on a powerful collaboration. So imagine a strong web woven from various funding sources. Each strand continue, uh, contributes to the program's sustainability and growth. So let's explore the threads that make up this supportive financial system. We have federal partners like the US Department of Labor, Education, Health and Human Services that provide essential resources with a focus on education improvement, developing a skilled workforce for early childhood education. There's also state initiatives building on federal foundation, um, state, building on the federal foundation. States offer apprenticeship expansion grants, workforce development grants, and scholarship programs. And these sources aim to directly improve the quality and accessibility of an early childhood education through registered apprenticeship, RA. Local champions like local governments, community-based organizations, and educational institutions play a vital role. These entities understand the specific needs of their communities, ensuring that programs benefit everyone involved. This collaborative effort creates a nurturing environment for ECERAs. It allows programs to develop strategic approaches that not only benefit apprentices employers, but also contribute to the overall advancement of the early childhood educate of early childhood education. Working together, we can ensure these programs have the resources they need to thrive. Our conversation today will provide you an overview of some of the funding opportunities available to support ECE registered apprenticeship. In part two of this webinar happening, on, happening in May, we will take a deep dive into accessing and using these funding options. Um, and at the end of our webinar today, we'll provide more information on the upcoming webinar. So now that we understand the importance of collaboration among funding streams and with our agencies, um, let's take a closer look at how to identify and leverage federal, state, and local funding opportunities specifically for ECE registered apprenticeship. The first step is to clearly articulate your goals. So know what you're doing, know what the structure is going to be, and the um, expected outcomes of your program. Have a plan in place. A clear vision will help you to target the most relevant funding opportunities. Did you know that several federal departments offer grant fundings that can be applied to ECERA programs? For example, the US Department of Labor is one. Regularly check the Department of Labor's Apprenticeship USA grants and other funding for other funding opportunities that support registered apprenticeship programs in general. While some might not be specifically for early childhood education, they still could be relevant to supporting your registered apprenticeship program. The U.S. Department of Education is another example. Explore grant and funding opportunities that support the um, workforce development, early childhood education. And remember, some grants may not be labeled apprent um, for apprenticeship, but still can be used to support program components like curriculum development or instruction materials. 
but don't overlook state and local resources. Think about these options, for example. State Department of Education and Labor. Many states offer grants specifically for apprenticeship programs or workforce development in sectors like early childhood education. These funds might come from the state's general budget or targeted initiatives set forth by the state. Local workforce development boards, we just spoke about that connection in our March webinar, which will be available on the Council's CAN network. These boards often manage local funds that can support apprenticeship in different industries, and engaging with them can provide valuable insights to local priorities and available funding streams. And did you hear about state and local early childhood education agencies? Some states and municipalities have dedicated funds for early childhood education initiatives, which can be used to support the development and implementation of ECERAs. Building stronger partnerships can significantly enhance your program's financial sustainability. Collaboration with local early childhood education centers, child care providers, educational institutions, um, these partnerships can provide additional resources in various forms, such as matching funds, in-kind contributions like training facilities or use of training facilities and equipment, or direct financial support. Also, identify foundations or nonprofits that focus on education or workforce development. Explore grant opportunities or partnership possibilities with these organizations to further support your apprenticeship program. With using these strategies about looking, securing all of your funding sources and working with this collaborative funding ecosystem, you can effectively secure the resources needed to develop and sustain a successful ECERA program. It's time for another poll. So looking at the list below, aside from staff wages, which of these are the biggest ongoing costs for providing professional development for your staff? We know that staff, we talked about the cost, um, and you mentioned a lot of these items um, as we were going through and you were chatting in the, um, putting your answers in the chat. Um, but if you're looking at it, what, what is the biggest cost for you and your organization? Is it providing tuition reimbursement, curriculum development, professional development resources, or providing staff coverage for training time? We'll take a look at these, um, at the poll responses. All right, so we have two of the very similar. First is providing tuition reimbursement and providing staff coverage for, um, for training time. Um, and then the other two did come in, um, curriculum development and professional development did come in Everything is about equal, but the providing tuition reimbursement and providing staff coverage for training time um, were key there, especially staff coverage. Well, thank you for that. And let's hop into federal funding for registered apprenticeship. So as we discussed, the federal government plays a key role in supporting workforce development and education. Um, let's dive into these significant programs and how they can benefit your ECE apprenticeship program. Looking at the slide, you can see several examples of federal programs that offer a wide range of resources to significantly bolster workforce development and education. These opportunities target a broad audience, including job seekers by connecting them with relevant employers and training opportunities. They connect with employers through financial incentives that encourage hiring from groups facing employment barriers. And some examples of the opportunities available from the Department of Labor are federal Pell Grants that provide financial aid to students in need, allowing them to pursue education and training in high school occupations, including early childhood education. Federal support for career and technical education programs help individuals develop specific skills and knowledge needed for in-demand jobs in various fields. And the Military GI Bill offers education benefits to veterans and their families, giving them an opportunity to gain employment through comprehensive training and support services. This can be a valuable resource for veterans seeking a career change 
or those interested in early childhood education. But these are just a few examples. Federal programs play an important role in building a skilled workforce that can meet the evolving need of our communities. Uh, while this slide offers a broad overview, today we're gonna focus on three specific programs with high potential to support ECERAs. The Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, or WIOA, or WIOA, the Workforce Opportunity Tax Credit, WOTC, Pell Grants and Perkins Funding. And these programs offer valuable funding opportunities, tax credits, and resources that can significantly strengthen your program's foundation. So let's dive into the Department of Labor's Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, WIOA. For some of you, this information might be a refresher from our March webinar, uh, but for others, the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, or WIOA, might be a new concept. So let's talk about it. So WIOA is um, allocated to uh, funds, WIOA allocates funds to states, empowering them to build and support their workforce systems. The amount each state receives varies, but gives them the flexibility to address their state's specific needs. The beauty of WIOA is in its adaptability. The funds equip your local workforce system to provide support and assistance to employers, youths, and adults, and employers. Funds can be applied for education and skill building, and the workforce system uses WIOA funding to provide support services for career seekers, which could include internet access, childcare stipends, transportation assistance, and career coaching. There's also an opportunity of, uh, for reimbursement of funds for on-the-job training hours. And we'll dive into that a bit more in our next, se se in our next session um, in May about how to access this funding opportunity. Now let's turn our attention to the Workforce Opportunity Tax Credit. The WOTC program offers tax credits to employers who hire individuals from specific targeted groups facing employment barriers. Registered apprentices who are in these targeted groups are considered um, for this tax, its employer tax credit. The WOTC program defines the specific categories, the, the employees that you hire um, who qualify for the tax credit are in the categories that include um, veterans with a specific time frame of discharge, long-term unemployed individuals, and recipients of certain government assistance programs. So employers who hire apprentices who fall under the WOTC, Workforce Opportunity Tax Credit Guidelines, can claim tax credits, credits on a portion of the wages paid to these apprentices, and these financial incentives can make your ECE registered apprenticeship program even more attractive to potential employer partners. Did you know there are ways to offset the cost of registered apprenticeship training? So let's talk about some uh, federal funding options from the U.S. Department of Education. The Pell Grant is a well-known program that provides a needs-based grant to undergraduate students. The great news, this is great news for apprentices. Pell Grants can be used for registered apprenticeship training programs, making colleges a real college a real possibility. Also, the Perkins Five funding program provides support to career and technical education departments at schools and colleges, and it offers funding for training in various fields, including early childhood education, which is a perfect fit for many registered apprenticeship programs. These are just some resources available, but up next, we're gonna dive into dedicated funding um, for specifically for early childhood education programs. So several agencies offer support um, for early childhood education programs, including the Department of Health and Human Services. They provide funding um, and services through programs like Early Head Start, Head Start, Child Care Development and Block Grant, and the Child Care and Development Fund. These programs offer various funding opportunities to support the Early Childhood RA Initiative. 
And while the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, um, IDEA, Part B and C, funding focuses on direct services for children with disabilities, it also emphasizes strengthening service providers' capacity. This means utilizing the IDEA funds can be um, can be used for specialized training and working with these children uh, with these uh, children within your ECRA programs. Since many of you are familiar with the general funding options, let's take a quick look into how the CCDF, better known as the Child Care and Development Fund, can specifically support your RA program. So the Child Care and De Development Fund, CCDF, can be valuable resource for your ECERA program. While most know the CCDF for providing financial assistance toward child care expenses, it can also be used to directly support your RA initiatives. And here are two key ways. Number one is supporting apprentices with child care needs. Many apprentices juggle work, training, family responsibilities, and the CCDF funds can help alleviate that burden by providing financial assistance for their child care needs, allowing apprentices to focus on their career development without worry. Second, CCDF works with investing in professional development. A strong qualified workforce is, is essential for high quality early childhood education. CCDF funds can be used to support professional development opportunities for your teachers and staff within your RA programs. This could, this could involve training on new curriculum, specialized skills for working with young children or achieving a high or high, achieving higher quality standards. With professional development, you're not only supporting your staff, but also creating a better learning environment for children in the program. Time for another poll question. Well, first, we're gonna let's, let's introduce the poll question. <laughs> So let's, we're going to start talking about um, state funding. Um, so we've explored federal resources, and now we're shifting to the state funding for ECE. Each state has its own unique funding landscape, um, but some common opportunities exist that can significantly bolster your program. So let's check out a few of them. State funding for registered apprenticeship. Um, many states offer funding to support registered apprenticeship through the development and expansion grants, RA participant scholarships, or tax credits to employers or sponsors. Did you know the U.S. Department of Labor awarded nearly $66 million in state apprenticeship expansion formula grants to 46 state, states to increase their ability to serve and improve and strategically expand registered apprenticeship programs? For many states, ECE is considered an in-demand field making ECERA programs eligible for this funding source. States may provide scholarships for registered apprenticeship participants, which could be in the form of a scholarship for apprentices or tax credits for our participating employers. These funds are specifically targeted towards sectors experiencing workforce shortages and early childhood education is a prime example of that. Now we're at our audience poll. So for this poll, please answer how familiar are you with the funding sources for early childhood education ECE programs in your state? Are you not at all familiar? Are you somewhat familiar, moderately familiar, or very familiar? And these could, um, these ECE programs could be um, community work, community-based organizations. It could be um, workforce, your partnership with workforce development boards. It could be your state um, Department of Labor. Um, there's lots of um, affiliations. So are you familiar with any of those? And we'll be getting these results here in just a few seconds. All right, so we have a nearly a split, but equal split between all four. Um, most folks are somewhat familiar. The lowest is very familiar, so that means that we all have work to do to make sure that we can expand and share these funding opportunities and information. 
So let's take a look at, um, so many states recognize the importance of investing in their early childhood education workforce, and that is growing. Here are some key programs that can help. So for your state, look and see if there are some TEACH scholarships. The TEACH Early Childhood Scholarship Program provides valuable tuition assistance for educators pursuing degrees and credentials in early childhood education. Um, this investment helps build a, highly, highly, a highly qualified early childhood workforce. Also, the wages, um, the wages salary supplements program. The wages program offers salary, salary supplements to early childhood educators. This not only helps attract talent to the field, but also provides opportunities for existing educators to advance their careers and increase their earning potential. But beyond these programs, many states offer additional financial support. This could include scholarships, tuition assistance specifically for registered apprenticeship programs, and these programs open doors for a wider range of candidates to join the ECE profession, ultimately raising the overall qualifications and expertise of the early childhood educators. And another poll. Are you partnering with your local community organizations to offset program costs? Yes, no, or I don't know. So community-based organizations would be organizations, and we'll talk about a few, like Goodwill Industries, United Way, or any community-based organization that's there to provide wraparound or support services. And that could be transportation, child care services, career support, career readiness support, resume support, um, lots of opportunities there for community-based organizations to step in, even, um, even with food, anything to help offset that. And we should be getting those poll results here in a second. Oh, this is excellent. So for the majority, um, it's equal. We got about half and half, but that, that's a good bit. We have um, yes, no, and a little bit for I don't know. Um, so we'll talk about how you can find out and uh, partner with some of those organizations. So next we're gonna jump into the local funding um, from the poll that you just answered and talk about um, these local government programs and community-based organizations. So we're gonna briefly jump into the world of local funding um, to help further explain and talk about the um, more uh, building sustainability in your program's financial foundation. So we've discussed federal, we've discussed state funding opportunities, but let's not forget the power of our local par partnerships. So building strong found, uh, relationships at the community level can um, unlock valuable resources and support for your ECERA apprenticeship program. And community-based organizations like Goodwill or United Way are often deeply rooted in their communities and understand the local need. There are, um, they may offer grants, scholarships, specifically focused on workforce development initiatives and provide wraparound services to apprentices. As an example, one program we are working with has, um, has connected with their local Goodwill Industries Job Connection Center to recruit apprentices for its program. Another program has secured financial support from United Way to increase wages for program participants. This is helping the employer commit to the progressive wage scale that their RA program um, requires and increase wages for mentors and certain staff affiliated with the Registered Apprenticeship Program. So local community colleges, let's talk about our education institutions. Local community colleges, technical schools, or universities can be fantastic partners with ECERA programs. There are many ways we can collaborate, and let's talk about a few of them. Colleges, universities, and technical institutions offer college can, can offer college credit for apprenticeship, apprenticeship coursework, and this can enhance the program's value but for apprentices seeking career advancement and contribute to program retention. 
They can help um, utilize facil uh, faculty expertise. Um, so a lot of times um, these program, these institutions have experts um, that are involved in early childhood education and it can help with curriculum development, mentorship opportunities for apprentices. And these institutions also can help share facilities providing training spaces, libraries, or technology resources that would benefit your program. That's the in-kind uh, the in-kind funding that we talked about earlier. Remember, building relationships is key. A strong network of local partners can significantly strengthen your program's impact. This is just a glance at how these partners can help. Um, at our upcoming webinar in June, we will take a closer look at how educational institutions play a vital role in ECERA success. And this information on how to register for the webinar will be located at the end of the presentation. So let's talk about funding and action. So we've explored a treasure trove of funding opportunities, federal, state, and local. And next month, we'll dive into accessing these funding sources. But I wanted to give you a quick overview of how these funds can be put into action. I'm going to pass it back to Haley. Thanks, April. I'm excited to get into talking about CDA funding, including a model we're excited about in Maryland. So. One of the many benefits of CDA training is that it is one of the most affordable options out there, particularly when compared to options like an associate's or bachelor's degree. The typical costs associated with earning a CDA are the training, the cost of which naturally varies depending on the source, uh, the CDA textbooks or publications, and the standard online assessment fee. Like much of the early childhood system and the registered apprenticeship system, funding for earning your CDA, including through scholarships, is decentralized and varies widely by state. Uh, much like the funding structure for registered apprenticeship programs that April has shared with you all, opportunities for receiving funding for earning your CDA are typically available at the state, regional, and local levels. Uh, you just need to know where to look, like with most scholarships. To support CDA candidates, the council keeps a repository of the CDA scholarships that we know about, and the folks monitoring the chat will throw that link in there for you now. Uh, there are some common ways that CDA funding is structured. However, at the local level, you can again see sometime you can you again sometimes see individual higher education institutions stepping up and offering scholarships to their students or childcare programs sponsoring their employees. At the regional level, you'll want to see if organizations such as your local NACI chapter might have a scholarship. As a Virginia resident myself, I know that the Virginia AUIC or VACI does, for example. Uh, at the state level, you again see funding for earning your CDA take different forms. Uh, many states opt to support the CDA and CDA candidates by baking it in, into their CD, CCDF funding or the Child Care and Development Fund that April mentioned into their budget. Uh, next, I'll walk us through an example of how Maryland created a fund for CDA training through the governor's budget. So in Maryland, while states are frequently innovating new ways to advance CDA funding, one model we are really excited about is the partnership between the Council, the Maryland State Department of Education, and the Maryland Family Network. Funding was available for educators applying for their initial credential or renewing an existing credential, and to be eligible, folks needed to be a registered family child care provider, licensed child care staff, or public preschool employee who worked in Maryland. I say was because this program was in fact so popular that applications have now been closed. Uh, as a result of the grant, over 1,280 educators have received books, over 817 educators have had their assessment fees co covered, and over 750 educators have received fully funded CDA training. Uh, and I will kick it back to April. Thank you, Haley. So when we talk about funding, we have to consider um, all the funding options. Um, so registered apprenticeship unlocks a variety of funding opportunities, including technical assistance. But it's important to remember that securing state and federal dollars isn't guaranteed. While registered apprenticeship programs often leverage a range of public funding sources, no single grant is typically sufficient to sustain a program long term. Therefore, most programs need to combine funding streams to cover their cost. Today, we want to provide you an overview of multiple funding options and opportunities available for the ECE registered apprenticeship. 
Next month, our focus will be on unlocking and accessing these funding options. We'll provide an example illustrating how these funds can be braided, blended, and layered to support program development, implementation, and continue, continued growth. Stay tuned. So up next, we're gonna talk about support and assistance. Did you know that ECE offers support and assistance? Let's take a look. So ECWC um, offers a comprehensive range of support and assistance to new or expanding registered apprenticeship programs. And we are here to help registered apprenticeships um, make, make registered apprenticeship easier for those involved. Our staff can meet teams where they are in the process and customize the following services based on their needs. ECWC supports the development of new ECE RA programs and the expansion of existing programs. We assist in outreach and education through customized presentations, education materials, marketing templates, and assistance fostering connections to support RA. Our team can assess and align professional learning programs with RA requirements and practices including ECE coursework and mentorship materials. We offer innovative apprentice recruitment materials and strategies and ECWC assist programs in exploring and utilizing multiple funding streams to support apprentice success and program sustainability all at no cost. So the Early Childhood Workforce Connector, ECWC, we also have an incentive fund. So eligibility for our ECWC incentive fund is provided to ECE registered apprenticeship sponsors and or employers. The funding is correlated to each new apprentice enrolled within an established ECE registered apprenticeship program or for startup costs for developing and registering an ECE apprenticeship. We are accepting applications now through May 2024. This is one, a one-time funding opportunity for registered apprenticeship sponsors or employers, and we offer up to $1,000 per apprentice with a cap of $40,000 per approved eligible, eligible approved sponsor or employer. The incentive funds cannot be used for wages and does not go to the apprentice, but you see from this slide, I listed a few ideas of how these funds could be utilized, such as classroom supplies, technology support, translation services, mentor training, or marketing to support your ECERA program. The funding is available to registered apprentice sponsors or employers to offset the cost of developing, implementing, and expanding RA programs. And this slide here, this is how you can connect with us and the council. You can connect with us with our info at ECWC connector.org. You can um, look at our website. Um, and then also we are in LinkedIn. We're also on YouTube and you can sign up for our newsletter. And then there's the council's email. You can, you can message the council and sign up for the council's newsletter as well. And here we are at the Q&A uh, portion. Um, we have just a few minutes left. So I'll ask our team, did we have any questions that came in? Um, that need to be, that we should take a look at and talk about? Those are some, uh, that's a great question. And uh, April, that was fantastic. Um, there's a lot of uh, kudos to you from the, um, the chat. Um, I also wanted to uh, say, so one question that just came through is about whether, um, I, I believe they're referring to the incentive fund, um, mm -hmm. but whether the incentive fund is funding through uh, DOL and can it be braided with a different DOL grant? So yes, the funding does come from the Department of Labor and um, our um, ECWC holds that incentive funding and it can be braided with other Department of Labor grants, but it has to be used for something different. So if you're already paying tuition, then we are not going to use the we're going to not use the incentive fund for tuition. But our team is situated to work with registered apprentice sponsors or employers 
to talk about and brainstorm how that funding can be used and to help you through the entire process. Thank you, Marjorie, it was a great question. Thank you. Uh, the uh, Another question that just came up, uh, I believe also about the um, incentive fund is whether this will continue or have a second round. And if you could also just mention um, what date the um, this round is through, I think folks would like to hear that again. Yes, so we are accepting applications through May of 2024 for this round. And yes, we are anticipating a, a future rounds of this. We are here for at least five years, hopefully forever. Um, but the funding will be available um, upcoming. Um, and if you're interested, you can always reach out to our ECWC connector um, dot, um, um, info email. And then, um, you know, we can schedule a meeting to talk about how this incentive fund may work for your program. Thanks. And then it looks like somebody also wanted to know if there's an RFP for this funding. I believe, um, again, I'm, I think we're still talking about our incentive fund. So do you want to talk a little bit about how they can apply? Yeah, so there's no RFP for this. So um, the incentive fund, you would need to be a partner with us. And we, that means we're providing you technical assistance and support to expand, develop, um, or register your apprenticeship. Um, and that funding... Um, there is a, a there is a, a an application that you have to complete, um, and that application, of course, goes through its approval process. But again, um, I will help you. Uh, my team and I will help you through that entire process. It's not a um, it, when I say application, it's not a uh, like you're writing a proposal or an RFP for a Department of Labor grant by any means. This is incentive fund money to support your registered apprenticeship, and we make it as seamless as possible for you. It is based on the number of new apprentices that you have um, coming into your program. So for example, if you currently have apprentices in your program, we can't count those. But for your new pro new apprentices starting, we can talk about how that funding can support them. All right, well, we're really close to time. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Haley to finish us out. Hi, thanks, April. All right. So um, in in closing here, I've got a few housekeeping items. Uh, first, we hope you'll join us for the special culminating session of this series at the Early Educators Leadership Conference. You can find more information about the conference and register on the council website. You can also find a, a link directly to the EELC page on the council website through the QR code on the slide. The next session in this series in May will be the second part to this webinar and will also focus on funding. In June, we'll walk you through empowering the ECE workforce through RA partnerships with education institutions. Registration is available for these events on the Council Alumni Network or CAN. Uh, and anyone can join the CAN regardless of whether you have earned your CDA. So I hope I will see lots more new faces uh, there after today. And that is all we've got for you. So thank you everyone for joining.